Yes. What is your favorite episode? <laughs> That's a good one. What is your favorite episode? Okay, my favorite episode. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. What's the favorite episode? What was the one where... where Describe it. Huh? Describe it. Uh, Hack and Slash were supposed to go and kill... Cyrus. Huh? They were supposed to kill Cyrus. Supposed to kill Cyrus, which was me. <laughs> I was Cyrus. And, um... And uh, I said, I don't want to do this. I'm not bad. We're not bad. We're not evil. I'm not going to fight. I said, no, 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 you got to do it. Megabyte will kill us. I don't care if Megabyte kill us, kills us. I'm not going to do it. And we decided to go over to the good side. And I said, I think my, the, the line was, I miss Bob. <laughs> That was a, a turning point for Hack and Slash when they, they stopped just being henchmen and became part of the core cast. What was the episode, Jacob? Game over. There you go. So Gary's favorite, favorite episode is Game Over. Your favorite episode is Game Over. Game Over. <laughs> My favorite episode, oh goodness me. Um, I think I've got a short list. Uh, number seven's on it. Bad Bob is on it because it rocks. <laughs> um, but yeah, probably number seven because it's just so out there. And it's a, a reference to the prisoner. Remember the opera one? Oh, yes. that was the end, end the yes. Remember the opera one? The uh, Gilbert and Sullivan kind of opera? Yes, Gilbert and Sullivan, yeah. Remember the opera episode? That was fun. And here's the thing. The one thing that pissed me off I hope is I also am a singer. I do a lot of singing. It was the only episode I wasn't in. And I come from musical theater, and it's the only episode I wasn't in. I wasn't around yet. I was still little. I like that you can't handle the tooth. I like that episode. I don't know. Oh, icons. icons. That was where you reboot. Well, your character rebooted why. as uh, Xena, yeah. Warrior Princess. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Western one. The end of the Western one. Then it had the Star Wars oh, yeah, bar. Yeah. Oh, the episode with no name. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'll be here all afternoon. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm just wondering. I guess you guys will upset SSL fans were when ABC pulled the plug on the reboot. Yes. <laughs> Short answer. Yes. In a word. Was the content of the show in question, or ABC just got sick and tired of seeing something that was Canadian and much superior to their stuff? <laughs> A little from column B, definitely. And, and I, don't, I mean, I'm not representing anybody up here, so I can say anything I like, and if I get assassinated, you'll know who did it. Um, the reason we were dropped from ABC, ABC was bought by Disney. Bought by Disney. Oh yeah, oh yeah, Disney. Yes, you know Disney. You, you better watch, you're a working actor, so you've got to watch what you say. Uh, <laughs> what? You're a working actor, so you have to be careful what you say. Oh, I know. I know. Yeah. Disney bought ABC, and Disney were planning to do their own CG shows, so they said, get rid of this Canadian rubbish. And that was, that was the bottom line. They were, they, and the thing that makes me laugh my ass off is it took them about seven years to produce their own show. <laughs> and that's wondering how many of you were upset when you turned in that Saturday morning to UTV here in Vancouver and saw them head size small on instead of reboot and then switch over to Como in Seattle and found out they had this awful alien family, human family hybrid show, which names the case me, but it was bad. <laughs> How many of you are upset about it? Let's cheer, cheer. I was upset about it, but for a different reason. I don't know, my mom found it kind of funny. I was 32 years old and crying about a cartoon. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, before the character makeover is later in the series, what was the deal with Dot's bizarre uniboob? Uh, <laughs> I can answer this. 
<laughs> the uniboob? <laughs> Well, that big bosom right across well, it was just, it was, a, it, it was an art thing. <laughs> now, I gotta tell you, I actually sat, or went on a tour of, of, the, uh, of the, uh, the backstage through the computers and all the, watching them generate the characters. And I gotta tell you, the guy who designed Dot, who put Dot together, I walked into his booth was a cell, right? And his cell was plastered floor to ceiling with bosoms <laughs> and women's bodies. And I'm going, well, that's a pretty good one. Nah. Well, how about that one? That's, that's kind of nice. Nah. Yeah, I know. We have certain standards we have to adhere to. But I says, yeah, but look at all these bodies, man. Surely you're going to come up with... But they did come up with a pretty good body for Doc. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I think the uniboob was, uh, was, you know, it saved time. <laughs> You know, two boobs is a lot more rendering, you know, you've got a lot more action at the jiggly jiggly. With a uniboob, they don't have to do anything. They just draw it straight across, save a lot of money. It's a cost, it's a cost cutting thing. You don't have to make the show work. I mean, huh? It also became a very point addition to all the rest of us. <laughs> have you seen some of the uh, dots wandering around here? No, not yet. Oh my goodness. Well, there was one. I remember one, uh, one gal who uh, who who got uh, in cosplay was was Dot, who was here a year before last somewhere. But my oh my, she was the absolute perfect Dot. There she is, and now she's the Mass Effect, ladies and gentlemen, it's Rachel Haley. I think that uh, if the animators would have seen Rochelle dre dressed up in that costume, boy, she would have been iconicized on that show. Hey, so, so why did I get the big bosoms? <laughs> Are you complaining? <laughs> well, you came along, to be fair, you came along later. We, the, the, the restrictions in season one, it was like, oh, it's a children's show and children don't know what bosoms are. <laughs> Exactly. We, we, I mean, so many of the th notes we used to get back from the from ABC and later people like YTV and stuff were like, really? Your children don't know what breasts are? <laughs> but I'd, I'd also like to say, Andrea, as the show grew, so did we all. <laughs> I, got a, uh, I, guess, I guess a comment before my question is that I grew up in a family that my dad was in the IT dis in industry so that he, he basically got to explain all the lovely computer jokes that were in the show and as such I basically, I'm going to school now for IT and I really like to say that all the stuff that I learned through the show, all the technical, all the technical lingo, plus the growing up with the humor of the show, I really want to thank you guys for that because it, it has just been absolutely phenomenal growing up with a show like Reboot. My question unfortunately was stolen, so I'm gonna have to reboot it. Um, I was gonna ask what your favorite episode is, mine being the uh, talent show with the air guitar duel, the guitar, guitar duel between Megabyte and Bob. But my, my question now becomes, um, who is your favorite character that you don't play? But then you've got the handle on him already. <laughs> so. Wrong gender. Oh, that's right, that's right, that's right. And who else would you like? Well, she tried to play me. I <laughs> failed. No, but it was but it was an insight, my dear, into my character as I watched you go happy, sad, happy, sad. And I went, ah, she hasn't got a chance. <laughs> I think Captain Capasso was a Captain Capasso. Yeah! 
I would have loved to play Captain Capacitor, and I, I miss him dearly. He was an old friend of mine, John, Jolly John, and uh, Long John Baldry, who played that character, and he was a wonderful man, and quite funny, and he passed away several years ago. But uh, I had the, the pleasure of working with him for, for several years, and I've always loved that. I ended up taking over one of his characters on a show called Sonic the Hedgehog. I don't know if you're... The New Adventures of Sonic. And I always thought of, of John when, he, when we were... Uh, I used to drive him across the Burrard Bridge every day, and, and he'd go... We'd go one kilometer over 50 kilometers an hour to go, Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, oh, dear. I said, what's the matter, John? Oh, way too fast. I said, I'm going 51. Oh, no, no. It's just, slow down, dear boy. Slow down. But uh, I'll, I'll never forget him. I, uh, with the, the first rock and, rocking out rock and roll party I ever had was a song that he did called Don't Try to Lay No Boogie Woogie on the King of Rock and Roll. And uh, to me, in 1971 or whatever it was, was the greatest rock and roll song ever. But that was my favorite character, was Captain Capacitor. Thank you. We forgot about Mouse. Yeah, I think we, I think we both wanted to play Mouse. She was a neat, neat character. So sexy. She was sexy. <laughs> um, in the opening of Reboot, it says the user inputs games for pleasure. I wanted to know what kind of person the user is if they never won. Like, there's a few times when they won the game, but most of the time, they just the ass kicked. And it's like, what kind of person would spend years playing game after game and just losing? I know a lot of gamers, none of them would be able to do that. So what kind of I, person was the I know? don't know, Donnie, but I'm looking at a lot of people out here who have played video games forever and ever, and it's almost impossible to reach that final level. That's what life is. <laughs> you see, ladies and gentlemen, Life is a struggle. <laughs> there is no winning, there is no losing. We just continue on, that's it. How old, brother? We just continue on until we aspire. You see that? He just lost his ball. It just came off the top of his cane, but it's okay. It's okay, it's all part of the journey. We play video games not because we want to win. <laughs> We play video games because we want to waste time. <laughs> because, brothers and sisters, we have way too much time on our hands. And that's the only way to make it work. I have tried video games until my fingers have bled. And I can't get past level two. I don't know why. It's just a killer. Don't forget thumb cramps. And thumb cramps. I mean, I've got scars. <laughs> I've got scars where I've taken the, the console player and went, Jesus Christ! <laughs> you know, I, I, I just take it too, but games aren't for me. <laughs> but that's why. We just, you know, they don't all lose it because you can never actually win. You can just get higher and higher scores, like playing golf. How many people here play golf? Hey, see all those golfers? Yeah, we don't get, we never get par. We never get below par. We never shoot the perfect game, but we go out there always trying to shoot it because it's not about winning. It's about the journey. Can I get an amen? Thank you.